Welcome to Blind Abilities. I'm Simon Bonifant. I recently returned from hot Houston, Texas, where I spent a week at the NFB National Federation of the Blind 2023 National Convention. I had a great time there talking to many great people, recorded some great conversations for your listening pleasure. And today's interview, I'll be catching up with the folks from Orbit Research and Access Mind. I had a great conversation with Venkatesh Churi, CEO of Orbit Research, and Adi Kushner, CEO of Access Mind. We talked about some of the great work that Orbit Research has been doing, especially with the Optima Braille display. That's a Optima Braille laptop in a fully featured Windows 11 and beyond package. You'll hear about that collaboration between Orbit Research and Access Mind. You'll hear about the work that Orbit Research has been doing on the Orbit Speak note taker, which is similar to the Braille and Speak device. And you'll hear about what Orbit Research has done in the past with the Orbit Reader 20 and 40 Braille displays, the Graffiti and Graffiti Plus graphic displays. You'll hear all about it in this interview. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and join me from the convention floor as I talk to Venkatesh Churi and Adi Kushner from Orbit Research and Access Mind. Hello everyone, this is Simon Bonifant here and I am at the 2023 National Federation of the Blind National Convention in Houston, Texas. And I'm here talking to the folks from Orbit Research. We have Venkatesh Churi and Adi Kushner. Very nice to talk to you both. How are you folks doing today and are you enjoying the convention? Doing very well, thank you. Yes, uh, the convention has been great. Uh, it's uh, always a wonderful event. Uh, meeting with the community and uh, it really gets us uh, recharged for the rest of the year. Very good. And Adi, what are your feelings yeah, about also, the convention? I also like it. Uh, I came over from like a, after a long trip here from Israel all the way, but uh, I like it. I like seeing people. I like talking to people. Uh, actually, for me, it's uh, fascinating to see that such organizations as the NFB exist because in the country where I come from, everything that is blindness related is, is a, a big mess. So it's nice to see that there are organizations who are seriously advocating and doing stuff. Great, great. And we're going to talk about your contribution to the blindness field and the amazing work that you're doing. It is little. It is mostly <laughs> this guy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Vankatesh, can you talk about the main functions of uh, Orbit Research for those who have never heard of your company before? Give a little summary of what you've done in the past and what you're working on right now. Sure. Um, so, actually, yeah, we are not that well known, even though this is actually our 25th anniversary year. So, we've been around for a while. Uh, some of our early products were uh, purely uh, speech-based products. We developed uh, scientific calculators uh, and graphing calculators. We've also developed the iBill. Uh, the iBill is a money identifier that is now distributed by the U.S. Department of Treasury to anyone in the country. And uh, we have a uh, line of calculators that we call the Orion uh, calculators. These are developed in partnership with Texas Instruments. So we've taken uh, uh, TI calculators and adapted them for accessibility. Uh, about uh, 10 years ago, we started working on uh, uh, tactile technologies and uh, we developed uh, our first Braille product, the Orbit Reader 20. Uh, this was in collaboration with a consortium of blindness organizations uh, known as the Transforming Braille Group. And um, it, that consortium includes uh, organizations such as uh, the NFB, uh, APH, Perkins School for the Blind, RNIB, et cetera. Since that first product, we now have a a range of Braille products, including you know, 40 cell models, and most recently uh, two multi-line display models that we call the Orbit Slate. And uh, we have a five-line 20 cell version and a three-line 40 cell version. Um, we also have uh, developed uh, a different actuator technology that we employ in a graphic display. And uh, we have a family of those now. Uh, the Graffiti uh, Interactive Tactile Graphic Display was introduced and uh, launched into the market uh, uh, in 2020. And uh, since then, uh, we have introduced the Graffiti Plus as well, which in addition to graphics, includes a line of Braille uh, cells as well. And uh, these are 
very unique devices. The pins uh, are settable at different levels, so giving you like a two and a half dimensional view of uh, pictures. Uh, uh, it can represent color and other attributes. And uh, they also have touch capability um, to uh, enable you to draw on the screen and have various very interesting interaction modes. Um, most recently, we have uh, announced the Orbit Speak device, which is a handheld uh, speech output Braille input note-taking device, similar to the uh, Braille and Speak uh, from many decades ago. And then, of course, the Optima uh, Braille laptop computer that uh, uh, Orbit uh, and Abby port partnered to uh, start up a new uh, organization called Access Mind. And it's under Access Mind that we are developing the the Optima uh, with uh, you know, uh, teams and efforts from both sides. And this will be the start of a, a, a new line of products. Great. Now the Orbit Speak, is that something that's a standalone that also includes a terminal to connect to other devices like a Braille display would? It does, yes, absolutely. It is a small handheld device with a Braille keypad, uh, about uh, two and a half inches by six inches by half an inch. And uh, it can do all of its functions standalone, but also has connectivity. It can connect over the internet to access libraries and, and uh, other types of, uh, of information. Uh, it has a built-in um, note-taking function, a book reader uh, that can read many different types of files, uh, media player, uh, music player, internet radio, podcast features, and access to the popular libraries such as uh, Bookshare and Analyst Bar, as well as NFB Newsline. Wow, very nice, terrific. Let's talk about the Optima. That's one of the newest offerings from Orbit Research, and it's been getting a lot of talk, and it's really a magnificent device. I'm really excited to check it out and see when it comes to the market and possibly purchase my own if I'm able to. Uh, Adi, this is where you come into Orbit Research. I know that you have had a major partnership in Access Mind and Orbit Research in developing this product. How did you come to start this collaboration? Um, I was actually working in this industry for a while, but in fields that are less known, uh, in more smaller markets. I am actually I'm 25 years old now, and I'm, I've been working in the industry since I'm 12. Um, but in my own country, I come from uh, Israel, so I was um, primarily working on bringing um, assistive technology to that market and developing special solutions for the Hebrew and Arabic languages because these are languages that are written right to left, uh, from right to left. And um, back then the screen readers, because of their mechanisms of work, um, were not able, there were no accessi solid accessibility APIs back then. And um, they were getting the info from the screen. So essentially Hebrew and Arabic were read in reverse order because the info that the screen reader gets was um, in the opposite direction. So my, I was working in this in Israel for a while uh, closely with big vendors such as uh, Freedom Scientific and uh, others to really uh, modernize the assistive technology offerings there. So that's how I started working in this field. Later, I um, I um, did some international stuff, which in, I really wanted to develop my own hardware out of my own need. Uh, the story was that I was looking, I saw note takers for the first time about 10 years ago, uh, because in Israel, they're not popular. In Israel, every blind person gets a Windows PC for school and a real display with a screen reader and they don't accept anything else to education. So like uh, when a blind person graduates school, they already know Excel, they know Word, they know how to work with the web. They're ready for employment, basically for uni for employment. And um, there was nothing that is blindness specific. And then someone tried to bring one of these note takers to the market. And I saw an all in one device and I said, okay, that's fascinating. Let's take it for an evaluation because that'll save me. I wanted for years a device that'll save me from carrying my laptop and the real display separately. And then I took it to evaluation, it was one of the known vendors. And 
I saw that it does several things, several very specific things. It does them well, but they're very restrictive. And because I come from a space where I was working in the mainstream world only, suddenly not being able to accomplish many things I needed to, such as even having a normal web browser or installing whatever applications I wanted to, to accomplish my job, um, were problems for me. So I gave up on these devices and I said, okay, I need to do my own. So I started working with the company that we did the L Braille with. Um, it was a company from Russia, Elita Group. Uh, it was our idea and we were looking how to best do it. And I joined these guys and we started, uh, I was working on such project in parallel and they were, and then we united and I started working for them full time. And we did that product. And then while the concept was fascinating and people were in love with it, um, unfortunately, um, the company decided to take it to a direction where which I could not uh, agree with going forward. And um, I again understood that um, I have to start from scratch. If I really do what want, if I really want to do it the way I see fit, uh, I need to start from zero and not, uh, you know, um, build something that is based on something that someone's done or, you know, basically not to have your full control because that's not giving respect to customers. So I said, okay, the path is clear, uh, I'm young, and the assistive technology world needs a refresh in my opinion. The whole philosophy needs to change. There's no innovation. I mean, you have these modernization of the note takers, you have modernization of various devices, you have new devices that are developed, such as the graphic displays, which are unfortunately out of reach of many people uh, due to their prices because of volumes, etc. And I said, I think that the assistive tech, the, the things we expect as consumers from assistive technology need to be redefined. And if we don't make that change, no one will make that change. So the vendors will not be motivated to, to, to innovate that much because, you know, things work, right? They sell, uh, the business model works, uh, but there is nothing new we're getting out of it. So I said, okay, I need to build a new company. I don't have production capabilities. I know what I want to achieve, but uh, I cannot build, I can design, I can be responsible for the development, I can work, I can manage software development, but the hardware to do it exactly how I want, I need someone that will be willing to take the risks with me and do it. And uh, that's how I approached uh, Venkatesh and I'm glad that I did. The, I couldn't have chosen uh, better uh, as it comes to me because um, these guys, uh, Venkatesh and his team, what they accomplished in recent years is something that no uh, no major vendor has accomplished quite a lot for the users. And while they're less known, I think they should be, you know, uh, Orbit's uh, commendable things should be uh, more popular. And I said, okay, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something with someone who truly cares about um, the customers and who truly cares about um, what they're doing and uh, someone who will be willing to take risks because that's a risky move. Some of the things I proposed are to, are very risky. They are new to the field um, and you know, uh, we're taking a different direction here. So that's how we ended up. Uh, Venkatesh did not even he hesitate for a second, uh, which was fascinating to me. And uh, here we are. So Great. it's mostly thanks to, to, to him that we're in the position that we are now. Great. As it happens, you know, we were, we ourselves also at Orbit been yes. thinking about a similar path for, for quite some time, but uh, you know how it goes, right? You know, sometimes uh, the stars need to, need to align and uh, mm -hmm. that's basically what, uh, what happened. And, uh, you know, we saw that we had very similar ideas and uh, similar desires and, uh, uh, most prominently, really, the, the desire to disrupt the status quo. And our thinking is similar in general along the lines, both for the future and, you know, and for, for, for how things should be. And uh, I hope that with my little expertise from this, uh, for this community, I can benefit uh, Venkatesh too. Absolutely. Terrific. 
We'll, we'll get into some of the technicalities of the Optima in a little bit because I feel like that's one of the great features of it. It's very customizable, but uh, Bank Attach, from your side of the development side, what was the process like trying to brainstorm and trying to um, get this to where it is now as it is in development and we're looking forward to this being released sometime in the next year or so. What was the considerations like as a development team? There are, uh, there are many, many different considerations, especially for a product like this. Um, uh, the, uh, you know, most importantly, we, we wanted to make sure that we were not biting off more than we could chew. Uh, designing a laptop from scratch is uh, potentially suicide. And um, that's, uh, that's something that we want to make sure we were not going to be doing. Even large companies don't actually do it themselves. Especially they outsource the internals. It. The uh, chips, uh, right. The, yeah. the, the motherboards. The motherboards and, and uh, you know, some, some of the, the uh, uh, internal uh, component module design. So we, um, we explored various options in the field and then finally settled on uh, uh, a, a, an arrangement with uh, 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 a company by the name of Framework, which uh, has come up with an amazing concept of a uh, sustainable and a completely modular laptop. So we're using uh, components uh, from that platform, but re-engineering a lot of things because ultimately it is a completely new form factor, completely new hardware, lots of considerations uh, ranging from thermal engineering to power management, of course, the ergonomics. On the ergonomics, actually, we had previously done work on a similar form factor device. Um, so, you know, some of that uh, uh, aspect was already worked out. But uh, the design considerations are probably <laughs> more detailed than you want to go into in, in this, uh, right. this podcast. But um, the, um, uh, the, the goal here really is for us to make something that uh, remains very modular, uh, remains easily serviceable, um, and uh, we want, what we really try to do is change that uh, paradigm of you know you buy once and you're stuck with it, and you know uh, you can't upgrade, and uh, it will go obsolete very very quickly. Mm -hmm. So we're we uh, we believe that from you know with what we have done so far. Uh, we have uh, minimized those aspects uh, quite a bit, you know, with the upgradability of the internal components. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, tried to ensure that the, the investment in hardware uh, remains, uh, you know, worthwhile for many, many years. Great. Well, I think I definitely agree with you, Adi, in terms of this device closing that gap between the note takers and the mainstream devices, because I, I find it very interesting, your experience growing up in Israel and how the Windows computer is the mainstream. And here, you know, we have these note takers, but also I, I have seen in my experience that there is a gap in between some of the Windows applications versus the note-taking applications. Absolutely. And, you know, some people are only trained in one and not the other and all that. And I, I feel like something like this includes the, the Braille component, includes the QWERTY component and all that. And for me, I find that I like that better. I like having a QWERTY keyboard when I use JAWS or NVDA or even Mac OS because they're QWERTY built operating systems. That's what they're built upon. And, and when you have Sure, you can do commands on a Braille display, but to me, I feel like just the uniformity that you talk about is is key uh, from those different platforms crossing over and converging. Let's talk a little bit about the technical aspects. What are the configurations of this? I know that like any Windows computer, this is customizable, upgradable, and I'm assuming from what we've discussed thus far that when new Windows versions come up, this will be right in line with that. Is that correct? Yeah, of course. That's one of the main goals. Um, really, the main goal of this device is to allow customers to make choices. And these are choices that, of course, me, myself, and others would have wanted to see. So we allow customizing and upgrading pretty much everything. That includes, of course, the hardware side 
for the processor and uh, memory, RAM, storage, you know, all of these aspects. And uh, that includes even generational upgrades. So whenever framework releases new motherboards with newer hardware, and uh, users want to upgrade, they can just uh, swap the boards in. They'll have to send it to a service place probably because it's still not user, uh, it's not easy for a blind customer to, to do it. But uh, the cost will be very low compared to the other options. And also in terms of um, software. So you will have access to the latest Windows operating system at the time of release, which for now it's Windows 11. And of course, it'll move forward. But you also have a choice of other software components, such as the screen reader you want to use. We have NVDA pre-installed out of the box with our own customizations and improvements that we're working on, as well as uh, JAWS uh, support, full JAWS support. We work closely with Vespero on some customizations there as well. And also, you will have a choice to use a note-taker-like shell with dedicated blindness specific apps that don't exist on windows that we're now working on such as a um, fully featured uh, braille word processor it's not going to be a microsoft word replacement but it's going to be the braille word processor you find equivalent to what you find on other devices today that uh, you know allows you to work with your various uh, brf and ebrf for the future files and uh, convert translate back translate and vice versa a braille calculator, a simplified file manager for the note taker mode, you know, that will not show you these techie Windows operating system files mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So uh, an, app, an app will allow you to access the libraries, the read books from various sources and notes app and so on, so on, uh, so on, so forth. So that is also going to be an option that you will be able to choose whether you want to operate the device into a experience that is similar to a note taker like experience and then switch to windows uh, to the standard windows world uh to the plain windows world with a screen reader when you need to or have um or or have the windows world all the way and then just launch our individual apps whichever of them you need at the moment so this is also a choice and also for this particular product unlike other Orbit, uh, other typical Orbit products, our products under the Access Mind uh, brand that are uh, dealing with Braille because we also understand that this product is targeting some more premium market sectors, some higher market sectors. For those who want to, we also allow a choice of Braille technology. So we'll be having the very nice, crisp, and uh, durable and more affordable. Orbit uh, True Braille technology, Braille cells as the base, but we will be also allowing an option to use piezoelectric Braille cells that you know from other devices for those who want a more quieter uh, uh, experience and a bit faster refresh rate. So really the choice is, um, the choice is completely yours. Great. So these standalone apps that you mentioned, is that going to be with speech feedback as well or just on the Braille display? What, what synthesizer does that use? Good question. So we, these are going to be essentially Windows apps that will be controlled by the screen reader that will be running, but their interface will look and feel like your other Braille devices. So for instance, now I'm running JAWS and I am sitting on the what we call the home screen the braille ui this is the name of our software of our braille software experience and i'm just going to navigate with the arrow keys book braille editor two of eleven books three of eleven notes four of eleven email five of eleven you see that is like your typical note taker style um uh menu of uh, all apps. Office apps dot calculators. My apps dot So for now, they don't open, uh, like if I click on the calculator, it will open the Windows calculator because we don't have ours ready yet. But uh, like the note takers, if I press A. Access my all programs dot 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 file folder. You have all programs. And if I press enter. Enter all programs dot 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 firebox three of 71. And I navigate now, you see all your Windows apps that you can choose to launch. So if you are in the note taker mode, you'll be locked to this shell. Um, so there will be no start menu, no desktop. If I press 
the windows the windows gate will go still to the uh, to the home screen of ours um, but the speech and braille feedback will be coming from whatever screen reader will be active at the time in terms of speech synthesizers we have licensed vocalizer is our preferred um, text-to-speech uh, integrated voice which will be used for several things first of all we're developing our own interface for vocalizer for both nvda jaws and globally throughout the system that will be a lot faster and responsive uh, compared to other implementations you've seen so far and it will also have some language detection capabilities for international folks um, but in addition it will also be used in our apps for example you'll be able to load a braille file into the braille editor and then issue a read command to read your braille file out loud with speech uh, based on your selected uh, translation table of course to convert it um, even in the background screen reader independent and we're also going to have some uh, functions that are um, controlling the screen reader so we'll have a watchdog for the screen reader so if the screen reader crashes by accident it will um, reload it and so you'll never be left without braille or speech and you'll be able to easily switch between all the screen readers so it's all going to come into into play very shortly if right? it's still in development but the the idea is that we have debated if we should make it fully self-voicing and self uh, uh, braille operational in terms of the shell and then we decided not to because then you'll have to learn separate commands for the screen reader and separate commands for our apps and the experience will feel different so instead we'll customize the screen readers to behave the way you expect to behave in a closed environment like this if you want to use these apps so that the in the experience will not be much different when you go outside to any windows application okay great and if i was in for example jaws and i wanted to turn off the speech just to use the braille would i just do the regular speech Absolutely. on demand yes uh, correct correct same true for nvda we're also going to have some global commands of our own uh, and some global modules. So for example, we're going to have our own global module that will display the system tray icons and our own global module that will display uh, context sensitive help, which is very critical, you know, in these uh, devices to provide on the fly help uh, to users. Um, and these are going to be screen reader independent too, so they'll work even with narrator. So you will be able to use your screen reader commands mostly, but for some global important functions, uh, you'll have our commands which will work regardless. So for example, we're gonna have a global speech command, which based on the screen reader running, it'll toggle the speech accordingly. So you'll have to learn just you know one command like you have on, the, on these other devices and uh, you will not have to mess with anything else. Okay. If you don't want to. So right now you're in the standalone mode. Is there a hotkey that would get you into the Windows experience? With yes, the there will be. Oh, okay. There will be. Now it's still under um, under uh, development. Actually, there will right. be a setting. It's not going to be a hotkey because if you are in uh, this mode, you probably want to stay in this mode, and I don't want someone to exit, you know, to Windows by accident and then lose their access back to to this mode but there will be a setting that they will be able that users will be able to toggle in the options application that will say uh, device operation mode and you'll be able to choose whether you want to be in braille ui all the time or in just windows uh, all the time but as you saw you can still launch apps windows apps from our mode so if i go to access all programs all programs and, all and I go to let's say Word. Windows Power, Windows Power, Windows Power, Windows Power. I'm pressing a W. Um, Microsoft Edge, the PC help remote incident management. Let's let's launch Edge yeah. for PC, example. Microsoft Edge, six oh seven. And I press Enter. Enter. Opening new window. Loading page. Address and search. You have Edge loaded, and if I do Alt F four. Alt F four. Braille UI home. Home list view. Microsoft Edge. You're going back to to our shell instead of the desktop. So that's mm -hmm. how the note taker will operate if you want to launch a Windows app alongside. Great. I know that this is a very fast machine. I can tell that. <laughs> What's in the specs of this in terms of what, what can people expect in terms of configuration, RAM, processor, storage? Uh, people can expect the latest that Intel at this point has to offer. We might be looking, Framework has some uh, other options from uh, 
AMD that are coming out, but for now we're going to be working primarily with Intel uh, chips, but uh, they can expect uh, the latest generations of uh, i5 and i7 processors that are available at the time. RAM will be, the baseline will be something like an i5 with 8 gigs and uh, 256 storage and it can be expandable all the way up to a crazy config of like, I don't know, uh, i7, 64 and uh, 2 terabytes, right? Wow. So like yes. the, the, the choice is really at your fingertips. This will also, of course, change the price point. Yes. But you will be able to upgrade later. So you don't have to purchase the craziest, fastest config now. Uh, and these are all standard modules, yes. right? right. So and, names and, uh, and NVMe drives. And NVMe. Yes. Right. And I, I'd assume that if you were to upgrade, it would be less of a cost than obviously to purchase it outright. Is that or is that not, not the case? Not, oh no. Okay. Not necessarily. The component cost is a component cost, exactly. but uh, if okay. you upgrade later, there will be some labor involved. Right. 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 Nominal, okay. but uh, so it probably won't be cheaper to upgrade very quickly, but the, the advantage that you, that you can get, which mainstream uh, computer users always have, is that over time the, the prices decrease, right? You know, memory right. becomes cheaper, you know, processor technology becomes cheaper, so for a similar size or capacity of memory, you will get it cheaper a year later. And right. Okay. also, what happens today with the existing devices is that sometimes because of the platforms they are running on, a hardware upgrade also decides if you can get an operating system upgrade, mm -hmm. which is, which was true for Windows 2, and they released Windows 11, but yes, it was with still the TMP, um, right? Yeah. Uh, TPM, uh, TPM chips, yeah. and they supported only specific processors, like, but it was still not as bad as what happens with our devices now, because if we buy a device now that available that is available on the market, and we all know the prices of these devices, right? Mm -hmm. Like a five thousand seven hundred dollar mark for a thirty two cell um, equivalent uh, device. Um, the first of all, even our base model will offer better specifications that than than their only model available, and will be a lot cheaper. But uh, the the main difference is that here when Windows, you know. Now we're running 13th gen Intel chips. I don't believe Microsoft will stop uh, pushing Windows, you know, 12 and beyond very quickly mm -hmm. onto these. So even the first uh, hardware revision should be up for a few versions of Windows ahead. And uh, unlike um, some devices that run uh, Android in this high market, high end market segment that depend on the OEM that produced the Android board to upgrade. Uh, Android, and then you have to rewrite all of your software, uh, your Braille specific apps on top of it. So in our case, these apps, while look and behave the same as you're used to, under the hood, these are Windows programs. So as long as Windows is stable, this will be stable too. Absolutely. Let's talk about the portability of the device and uh, the ports. That, uh, can you give a physical description? Uh, like. Uh, how many USB ports will it have? Will it have a microphone jack, headphone jack, that kind of thing? Vintage, do you want to? Sure. So, uh, to describe the device, this is about uh, the width of a laptop keyboard, so about uh, 10 inches wide. Uh, it's uh, from front to back, it's about uh, 7 inches, and it's about an inch th in, in thickness. And um, it's uh, got the, the line of braille is closest to the user with a row of cursor routing buttons uh, and then just above that uh, is the QWERTY keypad. The ports are uh, to the left uh, back side and the right back side of the, of the unit. Uh, they are on the sides um, and uh, the beauty of the platform is that the ports are fully configurable. So you can choose which ports you want and you can swap them um, to whatever uh, ports you might need that, that day or that time. Um, there, are, there is a choice of uh, several commonly uh, uh, used ports, uh, including HDMI, USB-A, USB-C, um, SD card, um, Ethernet, etc. So, um, and you can have multiples of these. So you can have two USB-C ports, one USB-A port, and one HDMI port. So the, there, are, there are 
many ways in which you can configure it, uh, and you can buy additional modules, uh, port modules, to uh, plug in and uh, swap in and out, hot swap actually, um, as you please. Great. And what about carrying this device? Will there be a carrying case like a lot of note takers have? Yes, or there will be a carrying case that will allow you to carry it on your shoulder or around your neck and uh, uh, be able to use it uh, on the go. Okay, terrific. That is terrific. Well, that is a great uh, overview of the Optima. Before we close, for those that are interested in the Warp It Speak, Mankatech, could you do a quick demo of something on that, uh, something with the interface? Uh, Show that a little um, bit. Sure. The interface on this is not yet finalized, so I, you know, we probably shouldn't dwell upon that too much because it's uh, uh, being being refined and adjusted as we speak. Oh, oh so that's not released. It's not as released. Of yet. It's not released oh, yet. Okay. Yeah. So the okay. Orbit Speak will launch in the September October time frame, and uh, the uh, the user interface will be slightly different from this. If someone you know is interested, you know, I can certainly. Um, Scroll through the. Uh, I should say, show the response no. of speak, yeah. home internet radio. So I, the, it's got a, a dedicated power button on the left side, and I just pressed it on, and it instantly came on. So one of the most important things actually to note about this is that uh, just like the, the Braille and Speak, uh, this is capable of instantly turning on and instantly going into the notepad or the, the editor for you to take a note and then just turn it off, put it away. So I just turned it on, uh, but. And I'm just Media player. scroll through the different uh, uh, apps options that we currently have loaded onto this unit. Update manager, global settings, calendar, file manager, basic reader editor, internet radio, media player, update manager. So uh, oh, very nice. those are the ones that are loaded now. And as I said earlier, it'll have a wider range of uh, apps available. We'll be offering it in two models that are differentiated primarily by software. And the standard model will offer a, a more limited range of uh, file type support and uh, library access. Uh, the elite model will have uh, a, the full range of capabilities. Great. If folks wanted to contact Orbit Research and purchase your products and visit your website, where can they do that? So uh, you can reach us through our, our website at uh, uh, www.orbitresearch.com. Uh, the toll-free number for uh, U.S. And, uh, customers is 888-606-7248. Uh, or 888-60-ORBIT. Great. And is that a way that someone can contact uh, Access Mind as well, or is there another method to do yes, that? Yes, uh, so we have a separate website for Access Mind as well. It's uh, accessmind.com, uh, one word. Dot .net, actually. Dot .net, sorry, thank you. We're still today. building the website. For now, it just has our email and uh, contact info. Soon there will be like a page of, you know, info about the Optima and uh, various other things. But uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, both of us also have access mind uh, emails. So. so, yeah, you can reach us actually at uh, sales at accessmind.com and sales at orbitresearch.com. Uh, both those emails will work. Great. Well, Venkatesh and Adi, I want to thank you both for taking the time to speak with me. And I know that this information will be very valuable to the listeners and I know a lot of people are looking forward to all the great work that you're doing. As I said earlier, for me, I'm looking forward to that Optima. I'm really intrigued by that, as I said. Uh, so I, I just want to thank all the work that you're doing and your teams as well to advance the blindness community and give people those options um, that, that we talked about are so valuable. I thank you again and enjoy the rest of the convention. Thank you, Simon. Thank, thank you. you for having us. It's really a pleasure. Such a great time talking to the fine folks at Orbit Research and Access Mind. I'd like to thank Venkatesh and Adi for taking their time to meet with me and talk to me about all the wonderful things that Orbit Research and Access Mind are doing. We have a lot to look forward to in the blindness community and they're doing some great work. If you'd like to contact them or give them feedback or purchase any other products, you can do so from the show notes. Thanks for listening and have a wonderful day.
When we share what we see through each, each other's, each other's eyes, eyes, we can then we can begin, begin to bridge the gap between, between the limited, limited expectations and, and the realities of blind abilities.